Well, Lincoln City crews had a busy day Tuesday after they say strong wind gusts snapped a big tree on the lawn of the community center. Look at that. Winds also blew down the town's 30 foot Christmas tree. Lincoln City has had some issues with its Christmas trees getting blown over in the past. So this year, park workers, they dug a large hole and they tried to anchor the tree. Well, that didn't really work. The tree is now back up, though, and re-anchored. Two teenagers arrested in connection with a Hazeldell murder appeared in court this morning. They are both 15 years old. Prosecutors say they killed an 18 year old while robbing him during a drug deal. KGW's Tim Gordon is live at the Juvenile Justice Center in Vancouver. Good afternoon, Tim. Hi, Ashley. You know, this is an awful case for sure involving young defendants. We were able to take a camera into the juvenile courtroom here, but then the judge ruled that we could not show the accused. Both the 15 year olds were in court on a charge of first degree murder. Both are being held without bail because a judge called them a threat to the community. Prosecutors say the 15 year olds are two of three involved in an attempt to rob 18 year old Gage Kaiser of marijuana. This is a picture of Kaiser from his Facebook page. Kaiser was shot several times sitting in the driver's seat of a Jeep Grand Cherokee in a Hazeldell parking lot. He died there while the suspects sped away. Yesterday, we reported on the court appearance of 17-year-old Terrence Busby. Detectives say he was the getaway driver. Detectives now say 15-year-old Tristan Cienfuegos admitted to setting up the crime. They say he didn't have any money to pay for the marijuana and planned to rob Gage. We couldn't find a picture online of the other 15-year-old defendant. Prosecutors identify him as O'Reilly Huin. They say he admitted he was the shooter. Huin allegedly told detectives he fired a revolver during the robbery after Kaiser kicked the door open on the Jeep. Paperwork says he shot all five rounds at Gage Kaiser. The bullets hit him several times in the back and shoulder. We don't often identify juvenile defendants, but we are in this case because of the seriousness of the allegations. Both 15 year olds will be back in court on Tuesday. Ashley. OK. Tim, thank you very much. Well, a Roseburg teen accused of murder will have to wait a lot longer for his trial. Kevin Adams trial was set to start in February of next year. Prosecutors are now pushing that to May of 2020. Court documents don't reveal why the trial has been delayed. Adams is charged with fatally shooting his foster mother, foster sister, and biological sister in 2017. Court records show that after his arrest, he confessed to the crimes to investigators. Family and friends are remembering a bend man killed in a motorcycle crash on Tuesday. 21 year old Davis Franco hit a pickup truck towing a trailer that turned in front of him. Davis's mom says she will always remember him as a family first type of man. Just last week, my husband got laid off <coughs> and he was right there, the one buying food and always there trying to help with the little that he had. And the last time I saw him was outside when he was taking off on his motorcycle. And this is just tragic. Franco's brother was driving on the very same road heading to work when he came upon the crash scene. It is 12.04 now. A man is in jail after getting tased on the University of Oregon campus. Police say 34-year-old James Hunter stole a pair of headphones near campus while a U of O police officer noticed him running away from the 7-Eleven with a clerk following him. Police chased after him and eventually, yes, they did tase him on campus. Hunter is now in the Lane County Jail facing several charges. Crime Stoppers is offering a reward for information about an assault suspect. Take a look. The victim worked with Portland police to make this sketch. He is a white man in his late 20s named Jeremy. He's about 5 foot 10, 180 pounds with light brown hair. This assault happened in September in Northeast Portland, but police just got us this information. They say the suspect told the victim he served two tours as a combat veteran. He also said he works as a quality assurance manager at a local manufacturing facility. Crime Stoppers is offering $2,500 for any information leading to his arrest. A Washougal family is trying to salvage their belongings after an early morning house fire. It started in the garage around 530 this morning. The family was able to get out of the home, though, before the fire spread. Nobody was hurt. Investigators are now trying to figure out what started the fire. 
been riding a long time and like 14 years I haven't seen this happen. Uh, I, I've definitely heard of it happening, but never seen it on hood. So yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, this is incredible video from Mountain Hood Meadows. More than 100 skiers and snowboarders trapped on a chairlift had to be rescued yesterday. It took rescuers several hours and a bunch of ropes to get them all down safely. Meadows officials tell us all the snow and freezing rain that came the night before froze the chairlift. Mike Garcia was on the lift just minutes away from his first run of the day when the lift suddenly stopped. The wind was blowing pretty good and uh, it was snowing pretty good for a while. So it stops for, you know, maybe 30 seconds a minute sometimes and get a little a little anxious. But after about 10 minutes, we started wondering what was going on. Garcia <laughs> estimates he was stuck on the lift for more than two hours before being rescued. The good news in all of this, no one was hurt. Well, three people who got trapped for days in an abandoned mine in West Virginia are back with their families this afternoon. NBC's Kevin Tibbles has their story. Overnight, an emotional celebration. The relieved families of the three remaining young people stuck in an abandoned West Virginia coal mine reunited with their loved ones after four excruciating days underground. It was terrible. <laughs> Cody Beverly, one of the rescued, thankful his grandfather has forgiven him for what he says was a bad decision to enter the mine in the first place. Erica Treadway came out of the mine with no shoes. Kayla Williams shouting back to her loved ones as she's taken away for medical treatment. Overwhelming gratefulness, especially for the rescuers who got them out safely. Thank them from the bottom of my heart. The fourth member of the group was able to find his way out Monday, telling police where to find the others. Rescue teams navigated from both ends of the abandoned mine through a maze of tunnels. Did you ever give up hope? <laughs> but for now, these families just grateful their prayers were answered ahead of the holidays. We appreciate every one of you guys, all, all, Anybody everybody. Anybody who was involved in searching for us, I just want to thank you with everything inside of me. That investigation is now pending as to why the group was down there in the first place. It is illegal in West Virginia to enter abandoned mines. Some relatives have suggested that they were there looking for copper wire that they could then sell. Kevin Tibbles, NBC News, Charleston, West Virginia.